This is what you can do with REST test. Welcome to this demo video where I will show you the main features of REST test, our testing framework for RESTful web APIs. As you can see here, you can get to generate a nice dashboard containing all the test reports of the APIs that you are currently testing. For example, in this case, we've been testing the APIs of Foursquare, Marvel, Yelp, YouTube, Stripe, Tumblr, etc. And after a few days, we can get to see how many tests we have generated, how these tests are evolving, the kind of errors that they are getting, how these errors evolve, or, for example, what went wrong, taking into account how the request looks like or how the response looks like. REST test is an open source framework, so any developer is welcome to contribute. Actually, let's take a quick look at the code to see how developers can contribute to creating new components in REST test. Here you see the main structure of the project. One of the key components in REST test are the test case generators. Currently, REST test supports random testing, constraint based testing, and search based testing. The latter is developed as a separate module. Any test case generator that is developed must extend this abstract test case generator. Besides test case generators, REST test also offers test data generators, which are also key for the generation of valid and realistic input data for the APIs under test. Any test data generator must implement the iTest data generator interface. And here we have a few examples. We have already created test data generators for dates, for example, for English words, or even for strings conforming to a regular expression. Now, let's say that we want to test our API. How can we do that? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to get the Swagger specification of that API. Here, we're going to test the Bikewise API, whose Swagger specification looks like this. It has four operations, and it is quite simple, so it's going to be an easy to understand case study. Now that we have the Swagger specification, we need to create a test configuration file based on it. And for that, we can use the create test conf main entry point of REST test. So the only thing that we need to do is to include this, the path of the Swagger and just run this class. So as you can see, the test configuration file has been generated in this path. So let's take a look. And this is how it looks like. So for example, for each parameter, a test data generator has been automatically configured. So for the page parameter, we are going to generate numbers between 1 and 100 or, for example, for the proximity parameter, we are going to generate random English words. Of course, you can customize these data generators to tailor your needs, for example, using more numbers. Now that we have the Swagger and the test conf, how can we test our API? The last step is to create a properties file like this. In this file, we specify some of the details of the REST test execution. For example, how many test cases we want to generate, the testing technique, random testing in this case, or how many test cases in total we want to generate. Here we are going to perform offline testing, so we are only going to generate the test cases once. And for that, we can run the test generation and execution main entry point. The only thing that you need to do is to include the path of the properties file here. REST test can also be run as a jar, but if you have an IDE like IntelliJ, it's easier to do it this way. Now the execution has finished and a number of files have been automatically generated. For example, here we have the Java test class that has been generated and we can run it whenever we want, for example, for regression testing. Also, a number of files that are machine readable have been automatically generated containing the test cases and the test results or even a time report. And the best of all is that we have also generated a number of reports that can be displayed graphically. In this index.html, if we open it on a browser, we get to see the report that has been automatically generated. And here we see the errors. For example, we found a number of 500 status codes and a number of validation failures related to the Swagger schema. So if you have several APIs that you want to test, you could deploy several instances of REST test testing those web APIs and leave them running for whatever period of time you consider appropriate and you could get to generate a dashboard like this. Thanks for watching.